Hey guys, it's Greg from BitGoblin again, and I'm sorry I missed last week's video. I actually got sick shortly after Thanksgiving, and the recovery from that has been quite the doozy. But I'm well enough now, and I'm here today to talk to you all about OpenSUSE Leap, specifically version 15.3, since that's the latest version. It's an all-bell distro in its own right, not being based on your typical Debian, Red Hat, or Arch distros that so many try to rebuild and shape into their own OS, but it still is a solid distro in its own regard, and one that I used to love playing around with quite a bit back in the day, although I certainly ran into trouble quite a few times. Thus, I figured it's been long enough since, as they say, time heals all wounds, and it's time for me to take a look at OpenSUSE again to see if it will work for me as my daily driver OS. You smell that? It smells like a bit goblin. So to get started, OpenSUSE is a Linux distro much in the same vein as a Fedora or Ubuntu, where they're like a free community-driven distro backed by a company that offers paid support. Or at least in Fedora's case, it's, it's for paid support for another product, but it, it's close enough. Anyways, the history of OpenSUSE is rather complicated, and I don't want to get too far into it because I don't fully understand it, to be frank. But from what I can garner, the origin of SUSE Linux started way back in the early 90s, based off of ye olden Slackware, everyone's favorite. And there have been several rebranding attempts and acquisitions over the years that have left us with SUSE the company offering a paid enterprise Linux known as SUSE Enterprise Linux, or SLE, and backing the OpenSUSE project, which oversees OpenSUSE, which is the free and open source operating system that many people in the community use, and the one that we'll be looking at today. There are two main variants of OpenSUSE, Leap and Tumbleweed. Tumbleweed is the rolling release distribution that has much more up-to-date packages. It's not a typical rolling release like you'd see in Arch Linux, since Tumbleweed basically just pushes out batches of updates very frequently, rather than pushing updates for each individual software package as soon as the source software has an update. But it's close enough and pretty much has the same effect, so, you know, if you really want to split hairs, you can, but I don't really care. Leap, on the other hand, is more in the vein of a CentOS or Debian in that its major versions have a stable base and they push security patches and bug fish, pff, bug fishes, bug fixes in between releases. They also push some bigger package updates through minor releases like Leap 15.1 or 15.2, updating things like desktop environments, Firefox, or LibreOffice, basically the things that the user interacts with and would want more updated and leaving the things that they don't like the kernel alone. In my opinion, that seems like a good mix of software updates, but to each their own. There are also some other variants of OpenSUSE that focus on containers and Kubernetes and that junk, but who cares about that? That's not fun. Moving on, this time around I decided that the best way to show off OpenSUSE was to really dig deep into the weeds and truly daily drive it on all, all my machines and give you all a rundown of the good and the bad that I've run into. Spoiler alert, it's a lot of both. And rather than going with my usual GNOME or GNOME-based desktop, I decided to use OpenSUSE's <coughs> I decided to use OpenSUSE's bread and butter desktop of KDE. This is for two main reasons. One, I figured when evaluating a desktop OS, it's only fair to use their official curated experience. And two, I kind of just wanted to try something different, and this felt like a good time. Now for reference, the three machines I installed it on are my primary desktop, which I use for a mixture of gaming and video editing and has an AMD GPU, my System76 Gazelle laptop, which is my mobile gaming rig and it has an NVIDIA GPU, and my System76 Galago Pro, which has a high DPI display and is the laptop that I use when I'm not gaming and just need to write a script or whatever. That's a wide range of hardware, which to be fair, is hard to get it all right, but should also give us a good idea of the strengths and weaknesses of the OS. So let's start with the good things I noted when daily driving OpenSUSE. First, the YAST installer was super easy to use and got me through the initial setup really quickly. In particular, I want to point out the guide to Partitioner, which made it really easy for me to quickly set up a ButterFS root and home partitions. This is compared to other installers, which, especially when dual booting, I would have to tweak it a little bit afterwards or just straight up start from scratch. But for Yast, it just asked me a few parameters, and it worked everything out for me perfectly, so I guess your mileage will vary on that one, but it worked well for me. I also want to mention here the screen to select which desktop environment to install. This is not special or novel, really, but I do appreciate being able to pick your desktop environment here instead of needing to download separate ISO images for every desktop environment. Again, this isn't huge, but it is a nice touch. 
The summary screen is also cool since it lets you see all of your final options before installing and lets you do some other fine tweaking like enabling or disabling secure boot or your system's firewall. It's also worth noting here that while I went with Leap 15.3, I can upgrade to Tumbleweed if I need more up-to-date packages, though I cannot go back if I wanted to without a clean reinstall, though that will be handy if needed. Getting to the desktop, however, all my usual software packages were available through the default repositories or additional OpenSUSE backed repos, or at least through their own repos like Atom or Sublime Text. Again, it's not special, but I absolutely hate it when I have to go scouring across the internet to find some repo for a package that I use a lot. On my laptops, I noticed decent battery life, similar to Linux Mint and others that I've used, so it's good to see that I'm not sacrificing that. Also on the topic of laptops, gaming on my Gazelle with the graphics option set to NVIDIA was really smooth. I did not have any game crashes or anything terrible of that sort, surprisingly, since hyper graphics on laptops can be a bit of a challenge for gaming. One huge plus for OpenSUSE though is the Yast Control Center, which in my opinion is great for noobs. Anything that you might want to do to configure or maintain your system is available either through a GUI or a terminal interface, and it's not overly complicated to navigate, and it's not even spread across multiple UIs, looking at you, Windows. The Zipper Package Manager is phenomenal. It handles package conflicts very well for the most part, and subcommands are a bit more intuitive in my opinion. For example, apt uses apt update and then upgrade to update the system because you have to update the package repositories and then download all the updates with upgrade. Whereas zipper uses refresh and then update, or you can just do updates since that will also trigger a refresh before downloading packages. Next, OpenSUSE's documentation for the most part was up to date and had options for the latest leap and tumbleweed releases. Again, this isn't game changing, but it makes for the experience to feel a lot more cohesive and well thought out since you can find commands for exactly the release that you're looking for. I've seen wikis and documentation for other distros only update pages in between releases when the steps change and assume you'll know how to change the version number or name in the steps. Which, sure, it does work, but to someone not as knowledgeable, it can feel a little bit sloppy and even seem like the instructions are out of date, even if they do actually work. I also have to say that this is the best KDE experience I've had so far. There were no weird annoyances like Clementine canceling system shutdown like I saw in Mint, or the global theme just randomly changing like I saw in Fedora, which is super annoying and jarring. It just all felt very cohesive and very smooth, and I kind of enjoyed using it. Finally, just overall the experience felt very smooth. There were some weird bugs and stuff that I'll talk about in a bit, but I can't say that I didn't enjoy using OpenSUSE since, for the most part, it just worked and got out of my way, and I didn't have to work around things like Wi-Fi not waking up from sleep or any of my usual applications being laggy and not working right. You know, like the typical like nagging problems that you just really don't want to deal with. Now let's talk about the problems that I ran into when using OpenSUSE and any grievances that really stood out to me. First, the gas installer, while it was a smooth experience for the initial setup, it seemed to take forever to complete the final install. I have a gigabit connection to my home, and whether it was my desktop, which uses an ethernet connection, or my laptops over Wi-Fi, all three of my machines took a solid half hour or more to complete. I know this isn't so bad since it's really just a one-time thing, but it was a little off-putting needing to wait so long, and I'm just really curious why this took so long. Maybe they're just throttling their repos or something, but either way, it just didn't sit well with me. Related and skipping ahead of it, the Zipper Package Manager also feels very slow. On the other distros that I've used, I can usually kick off a package upgrade and it'll be done very quickly, unless I have like several gigs to download. But even small upgrades on OpenSUSE feel like I can go play some games and make dinner, and maybe after all of that, the upgrades would be done. My best guess is that Zipper only downloads packages in a single thread instead of doing multiple simultaneously like others do, which really speeds up the download of a ton of smaller packages, but whatever the reason is, this was a bit of a drag. Getting back to the installer, the Wi-Fi connection tool for the installer was actually pretty bad in my opinion. It's this text-based menu thing where you have to manually enter the SSID name, pick the security style for the network like your passphrase or credentials or whatever, and then you obviously enter said passphrase or credentials. I've seen worse, and text-based uh, menus really are not bad, like I'm pretty used to them from the, the old Ubuntu installers and Debian installers, 
but it's kind of a jarring experience and a bit of a mood kill in my opinion since everything else has this nice polished look and then you have this. There's also this small thing that's like really stupid and frustrating. By default, the way sudo is set up on OpenSUSE is so that everyone can use sudo and they're prompted for the root password, meaning you have to share that root password with other people. Instead of the more typical way, which is a bit more secure, of only permitting specific users to use sudo and then using their own password to complete the process. This is easily correctable by editing Etsy sudoers, but it is still kind of annoying that OpenSUSE does it differently than most, if not every other Linux distro does, and in a much more uh, insecure manner. Moving on to some more desktop -y usage stuff, my Galago Pro under KDE, the high DPI scaling was inconsistent at best. For a few examples of this, my mouse cursor would change size when hovering over some windows uh, and not other windows, which was a little bit jarring. Some apps supported it very well, all the text and icons and everything would scale, but others did not. And primarily this was older apps or flat pack apps that I noticed. In the main panel, icons would scale like, you know, CC Firefox and Thunderbird here, icons scaled very well, but in the system tray, they did not. I know these are two separate parts of the desktop, but why would not all icons scale the same across the desktop? That just seems weird to me. Now, to be fair, I understand that high DPI displays are a little bit harder to support and is a bit of a newer thing. And I would also like to note that under GNOME, I had a much better experience. So if you have a high DPI display and want to use OpenSUSE, GNOME is a solid option still. As for my Gazelle laptop, there was no clear way, if any, to do NVIDIA Prime Hyper Graphics on my gaming laptop. This was not the end of the world as you can switch between either the straight Intel or NVIDIA graphics, log back in, and then you're golden. But it's a little inconvenient when on other distros or even on Windows, I can do a hybrid setup where I can use Intel to save battery for the most part and then automatically kick in the NVIDIA graphics only when I need them for games or whatever. Also, when I mentioned earlier that I didn't have any trouble with apps being laggy or whatever, that was mostly true. I did have one app that was a problem on my desktop specifically, and that was Steam. And that kind of sucks for a gaming desktop. It would randomly freeze while like not really doing anything, like the window would just kind of stop responding while clearly the rest of the, of the desktop was still functional. Then I also had trouble running games from Steam since they would straight up like not launch. Like I would click play, it would do something for a short period of time and then it would just quit. Not sure if this was an AMD driver thing or whatever, but I need my games. I have a couple ideas on how to fix this, but we'll talk about that in a bit. So I guess all that's left to talk about now is, will I continue using it as a daily driver? And right now I think the answer to that question is yes. I actually went into this experiment expecting a death by a thousand cuts scenario, where for the most part it would work, but there would be too many nagging problems that would make it a drag to use my computer and make me want to switch back to something more conventional like a Linux Mint or Pop OS. But honestly, my opinion has changed quite a bit in the time between initially starting this project by installing it as a daily driver and then finishing writing this for the video. My experience has been pretty smooth and the things that I really care about, like quick boot times, software support, decent battery life on my laptops, and a good gaming experience. I actually played a mess ton of Civilization VI recently on my laptop using the NVIDIA graphics and had no issues whatsoever were there, and the things that I mentioned that weren't great about OpenSUSE, I can either just ignore because I don't need it that frequently, like my point about Zipper taking forever to run updates, or can work around things like the high DPI scaling things by just using GNOME Desktop for the time being. That said, I'm still not entirely sure if I want to stick with it long term for a daily driver, as I'm sure some other OS will catch my eye when I get bored, and I've even swapped back to Pop! OS temporarily on my desktop because of the aforementioned Steam gaming issue. Don't get me wrong, this is something I do want to solve at some point and put Leap back on my desktop, but that'll be an adventure for another time. But one big plus for me for using OpenSUSE is actually something akin to Windows, which, and I apologize if, if this sounds weird, but hear me out, is that it's so ubiquitous among desktop use and it's so comfortable that it's kind of boring and less of a distraction. Assuming it's working, of course. And for whatever reason, my time running OpenSUSE has kind of felt the same way to me too. When I boot up my, my machines, I don't really think about, oh, this is cool that this is running X, how leet, or how much of a pain it is. It all just kind of worked and I was able to just start using everything normally without much thought. 
I was I just kind of went about my business normally. I didn't really think about what I was using or how I was using it. I was just able to use my computers as I wanted them. Everything just kind of worked except for the Steam thing on my desktop. And I know that's a bit more of a personal take. You can feel however you want about your OS. It's all opinion stuff. No judgment there. It was just nice to me. I really appreciated how smoothly it fit into my workflows. So I guess to sum it all up, OpenSUSE is pretty good and even has some quirky charm if you're into that. And as an aside, I also really like how there are so many Linux distro options available that are getting more plug and play. So you can swap them if some OS does something you don't like or whatever. OpenSUSE could just use some polishing onto parts that I guess you could call more like edge casey kind of stuff, such as the high DPI displays and hybrid graphics. But nonetheless, it was a rather smooth experience and I'm honestly considering this as my daily driver. But now I'm curious to know what you all think about OpenSUSE. If you've used it before, you like it, you hate it, all that fun stuff. So be sure to let me know in the comment section below your thoughts on OpenSUSE or if there's another OS you'd like me to take a look at for a future video. If you just liked the video, then you know what to do. But if you did like it, then go hit that like button, get subscribed and hit the bell icon so you can keep up with my latest videos and show your support. I've also got a Discord server if you'd like to join the community just to chat and hang out with us. Or if you need to get help, there are several channels to get just that. I hope you all have a great day and I will catch you in the next one.